Hello and welcome to Financial Statement Analysis Lecture Number 2. Today's lecture topic is on understanding the business. Understanding the business is step one in our business analysis framework. Every week in Financial Statement Analysis, we're going to step through the business analysis framework and learn how to value a business. The first thing that we're going to learn today is what's called a top-down analysis. A top-down approach to valuing a business first requires us to have an understanding of the macroeconomic factors that influence your business's performance. Then you need to develop a deep understanding of the industry in which your firm operates in. And finally, you analyse the strategy of your firm and understand how they develop and maintain their competitive advantage. First of all, we're going to learn about the economic analysis and what needs to be done. So the aim of an economic analysis is to understand how changes in the broader economy will influence the firm that you are valuing. This is really important because you need to understand the external factors that your business does not control and how they influence the actual performance of your firm. And this is going to be really crucial in later stages when we have to develop forecasts of future performance. If you don't understand how the economy influences your firm, you won't be able to take that into account when you forecast future performance. As we look at an economic analysis, we're going to go through a, a broad range of factors that could influence a firm's performance. Some of these factors will be very relevant to specific firms, while not at all relevant to others. It's up to you as an analyst to understand which economic factors will influence a particular firm. Some of the key economic indicators that are important to look at are things such as GDP. You need to understand how changes in the size and growth of an economy will affect the firm you're valuing, and every firm will be affected differently. So looking at GDP is a good starting point. GDP, or gross domestic product, measures the market value of final goods and services produced within a country's economy. When you're valuing a company, you want to understand the GDP and the growth in GDP, and you may have to look at either a domestic economy if your firm only operates within one country, you may have to look at the GDP growth around a range of countries if your firm operates across borders, or maybe even a global economy if your firm is a true multinational or transnational firm. Every firm is going to be sensitive to GDP, but in different manners. Some firms are very, very sensitive to changes in GDP growth. If you think about highly discretionary products, high value luxury brands, they're going to have strong growth when the world economy is doing really well. However, other businesses might do well when the economy slows down. For example, debt collection companies, secondhand stores, they'll often do better when the economy is slowing down. So every business is going to be different. Another thing that you'd want to consider is the operating leverage of your firm. Operating leverage is something we're going to talk about more in future weeks. But briefly, we need to look at the difference in variable costs and fixed costs that your particular business faces. Businesses that have a lot of fixed costs have high operating leverage. And that means for a small improvement in the economy or a small improvement in their sales, they're going to keep more of that as profit. So firms that have high operating leverage are often more sensitive to changes in GDP and world growth rates. Next, you might also want to look at inflation. Understanding how the rate of inflation will affect the firm you're valuing is also really important. Inflation could influence both the revenues your firm earns and the expenses that your firm faces. For example, the price that your firm's able to charge its customers will also be a function of inflation. If inflation is strong, your business may be able to increase prices every year and inflation may not be a huge factor. On the opposite side of the income statement, the expense side, you need to be able to think about inflationary factors that your business will face on the expense side. For example, is the cost of labor increasing a lot? Are the cost of key supplies going up? Will the business be able to increase their prices as rapidly as their expenses increase, or will they suffer a shrinkage in their profit margin? Another factor that's important to investigate is how the foreign exchange rate influences your company. Understanding how changes in the foreign exchange rate will affect your firm you're valuing is important because nowadays most businesses do operate internationally, and that will involve transactions utilizing foreign currency. Foreign exchange is going to be much more important of a factor for a business's performance when they are operating across global markets, 
when their supply chain is heavily focused on international suppliers, and also if they are an importer or an exporter firm. So when looking at foreign exchange, you first need to get an idea of which foreign currencies does your company often utilize. You also need to think about the suppliers that your business has. Are we buying goods from foreign countries and in which currency are we having to purchase our products? Therefore, if foreign currency rates go up or down, we can start to get an understanding of how that will affect the business's finances. A really major factor you need to consider is if your business is an importer or an exporter. Export related firms will often benefit when the Australian dollar decreases in value like we're currently experiencing. That makes exports cheaper and therefore international buyers will have a higher demand for Australian products. If your firm is an importer and the Australian dollar is decreasing, it then makes the products you're buying more expensive for local Australian customers. This could lower the demand for your products. Interest rates are an important economic factor that you'd want to understand because interest rates can affect your business's performance in multiple different ways. First of all, the most obvious way is that if interest rates go down and your firm has a lot of debt, they may then have a decrease in the interest expense they have to pay every year. This could lead to an increase in their net profit as interest expenses decrease. But before we can make that argument, you'd need to understand what kind of debt does your business have? Is it a fixed or variable rate? Are they likely to increase their debt capacity when interest rates go down, thus requiring extra interest repayments? So we need to have a deep understanding of the debt that your business has. Next up, if interest rates do decrease, your business may have new viable business opportunities. They may be able to borrow funds at a cheaper rate to invest in marginal new projects. Likewise, the firm's cost of capital, such as their weighted average cost of capital, could decrease, which will also have an influence on their valuation. Finally, interest rates will often affect consumer decisions. Buying a house, buying a car, these are often done using borrowed money. So when interest rates change, these particular industries will be particularly sensitive to changes in consumer behavior. Understanding how changes in commodity prices influence your business is also really important. Commodity prices fluctuate day to day, and these changes in price can have a big impact on either your business's revenues or their expenses. For example, Australia has a massive resources industry. We have hundreds and hundreds of mining firms and they're completely dependent on selling the resources that they mine out of the ground. These resources face fluctuating commodity prices. For example, the price of gold is traded in a market and the individual supplier, the gold mine, has no control over the gold price. So their revenues will change rapidly depending on changes in commodity prices. On the other side of the income statement, the expense side, lots of companies require commodities as an input into their production. If we Think of Qantas, one of their big expenses is fuel costs. That is, the oil price is a big influence on their profitability as it's one of their major expenses. Likewise, we could think of a fashion retailer. They're dependent on the price of cotton. If we eat chocolate bars, the cocoa price influences the price of chocolate bars. So understanding the key inputs into your business and what commodity prices are doing could also help us forecast our future expenses and profit margins. There's a range of other economic indicators that you should look at for your business. Every business is unique and they may face unique economic indicators. For example, here we've got an article about Mervac, who are a large property development company. One of the key economic indicators that Mervac need to look at is property prices, land prices, and how the overall property market is behaving within the market it operates, which is primarily Australia. Here's a little bit of a different one. Invocare are Australia's largest funeral home provider. They have over 30% of market share in the funeral home and crematorium market. So one of the key economic indicators to understand Invocare's business is the demographic data of Australia. Do we have an aging population? Yes, we do. And that leads to higher death rates every year. Death rates are one of the key economic drivers of Invocare's customer base. Overall, I've just talked about a range of different economic indicators and very briefly touched on how they may influence firms' performance. 
The reason why we need to understand this is because in future weeks, when we start looking at how to forecast a firm's performance, the understanding of economic factors will help us with our forecasting. If we think about sales revenue, sales revenue is a function of price times quantity. The price of the goods or services you sell times the number of goods or services you actually sell gives you your total sales revenue. When we want to forecast sales revenue, we need to think about how the economic influences of firm may influence either the price of our goods or the quantity of goods we sell. For example, changes in GDP and interest rates may influence the quantity of goods you sell. Generally, as GDP grows, the economy becomes more prosperous, people are willing to buy more products. The quantity of goods businesses sell will increase as the economy goes higher. Changes in things like inflation, foreign exchange rates, and commodity prices may influence the price in which you can sell your products. If we have a lot of inflation and prices are going up, customers may not have enough money to buy as many of your products. So we may then have decreased sales revenue that way. Also, when we're forecasting, we need to forecast a company's profit margin. Changes in interest rates, foreign exchange, and commodity prices also have a really strong influence on the revenues you can earn or the expenses of your business. And the interaction between those two accounts allows us to calculate the profit margin. So overall, the whole purpose of our economic analysis is to improve our forecasting. We wanna make sure that we have a good understanding of the drivers of our price of our goods and the quantity of goods we sell so that we can forecast revenue and profit margins as well. The economic analysis we've talked about so far may seem relatively straightforward and obvious, and that's because often it is. But it is important to remember that economic analysis is important in being able to value a business correctly. Here's a little example that I wanted to step through from the current climate. EOG Resources are a US-based firm, and they're a very successful and fast-growing business. In 2016, they had $2.8 billion in gross profit. By the end of 2019, their gross profit had increased to $11.5 billion. Now this is a 318% growth in profit in over three years. This is insanely good performance. Growing your profit at 318% over three years is a growth rate that you won't be able to keep up for long. They're a very, very successful business. Here are some of the uh, numbers from their income statement. Here we've got their gross profit from 2016, about 2.8 billion and it's increased year on year up to about 11.5 billion by the end of 2019. Their revenues also experienced really large increases, okay? And their cost of revenue did not increase that rapidly, okay? So their profit margin was increasing along the way. EOG also have a low price to earnings ratio. A lot of investors will invest in companies that have a low price to earnings ratio because they believe a low PE ratio indicates a cheap or good value company to invest in. If we have a look at EOG's price to earnings ratio, we can see that here their trailing price to earnings is currently at about 7.3. That is a decrease from a 16 times price to earnings ratio just a couple of months ago. Okay. The reason I'm showing you EOG as an example is one of the most common mistakes that both students and also professional analysts make is that they assume that past performance is always going to continue on into the future. When I mark students forecasting assignments, the most common forecasting techniques students use is they look at past performance and they just assume the same growth rate will happen in the, in the future. This is where economic analysis is really important. EOG will not continue to increase their revenues this year. Their gross profit will decrease. Why? The most simple, econ in, uh, the most simple economic analysis here shows that EOG resources are a oil producing company. The price of oil in the last couple of months has decreased by a huge amount, more than 50% decrease in the oil price in a few short months. If all else is equal, EOG will therefore have a revenue decrease of at least 50 or 60%. If they keep their production levels equal, the price they are able to sell their product for is decreasing. So therefore they're going to earn less revenue. Their expenses will still be reasonably similar. So therefore their gross profit will be really hurt. 
If we don't understand the economic environment our business faces, if we just look at the financial statements and we see EOG are a fast growing company with rapid revenue and gross profit increases, we could be forgiven for thinking this is a fantastic investment opportunity. They're a growing firm with a low price to earnings ratio. A lot of people would invest in that company. But when we start to understand the drivers of that firm performance and the economic environment, we can see that there's a reason why their stock price should decrease a lot and that they won't be able to sustain that performance into the future. I wanted to finish off our discussion on economic analysis with a few practice questions to get you thinking about how different economic indicators will influence different businesses. First of all, I thought it would be good to talk about Ferrari. Ferrari are a luxury car brand and people are only going to buy Ferraris when they're feeling very wealthy and their incomes and wealth are increasing. So Ferrari are likely to be very sensitive to changes in global GDP. When global GDP is increasing, we can expect Ferrari sales to also increase a lot as well. That doesn't mean all businesses are sensitive to increases or decreases in global GDP. If we think about a beer company like Victorian Bitter, VB, they're generally a low value beer. And during times of recession or decreasing GDP, people still generally like to drink alcohol. But what they do is they switch from high value luxury alcohol brands such as wine and spirits, and they'll often switch to cheaper beers and wines. So VB will probably be much more resilient to a recession or decrease in GDP than a luxury consumer brand like Ferrari. So you have to have an understanding of who are your customers, when will your business be successful, when will it be resilient, and understand that different businesses have different sensitivity to global changes in GDP. Another economic indicator could be looking at the change in labor rates. For example, there could be regulation that increases the minimum wage, or if society is becoming prosperous, wages of their employees may increase. So for example, if there's regulation that increases the minimum wage, McDonald's might be a company that's very sensitive to this change. A lot of McDonald's employees are on the minimum wage, and thus any change to this regulation, such as changes that are proposed in America during the current election campaign, will really hit McDonald's hard. But a banking company like Goldman Sachs probably won't feel much effect to a change in the minimum wage because their employees are well paid and that particular change won't affect that business. In concluding our economic analysis discussion, it's very important to understand the economic drivers of a firm's performance. It's a difficult thing to do because there are so many varied economic indicators that may influence your firm's performance, but getting a real grasp of the important ones that influence your firm is important for your future forecasting work. When you are doing an economic analysis, don't look at every single every single economic indicator and assume they're all equal, try and focus on the ones that really do drive your firm's performance. And in doing so, try and show or prove that there is a direct connection between a particular economic factor and your firm's performance. You can do this in numerous different ways. You may be able to explain the mechanism. You may be able to use quotes from the business. You may be able to use statistics to show a correlation or a regression analysis to prove that these factors are intertwined. When you start to understand the true key economic drivers, you can then spend more time analyzing them and less time analyzing the factors that are small or insignificant factors influencing your firm's performance. Thank you.